Okay. Uh, it's my item. There we go. Um, agenda. We are looking at. It. We didn't. We did not meet in the front month of February. Uh, we were going to. We were going to, of course, postpone and meet at the end of the month. I appreciate everybody being flexible enough to. Uh, postpone that February meeting. Basically, we just canceled the February meeting and we're doing this. We're getting back on the early month meeting. So we're going at the start of March. I'm assuming we'll do this at the end of the meeting just to make sure we're on the same page. We can, we can talk about when the next meeting date is, but I'm assuming that, that this can satisfy March and we can just get into April. We don't have to make up for February if we don't need to. Um, if there is information, if there if there are uh, if there's a if there's a cause to to meet again in March, then certainly we can make that happen also. But I think that we should be able to schedule the next one out for April. We'll deal with that at the time and the meeting. Um, welcome everybody. The uh, I, I guess we can start by by confirming March minutes, or I'm sorry to pick out who's going to be doing March minutes. Matt has March minutes. Appreciate it, Matt. Uh, I'm sorry, motion for Matt to do the minutes. You know, I don't think he's volunteered to do them all and we're totally on board with that, so. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> um, I don't have anybody in, atten in public attendance right now. And, uh, and so I do have a space at the beginning for public comments. I will also leave one at the end, just in case, uh, just for my own sake and for you guys' sake in particular, I'm gonna get the, I'm going to get the, the publication for the meetings a little bit earlier. I don't know if that's what has people not coming in to comment publicly on what we're doing, but uh, if there are people that are dying to, to uh, uh, comment at rec commission meetings, then I will make sure that those, those are posted at least a week in advance. Um, Sarah. I would say in the time I've been on the uh committee we've rarely had it public comment has been infrequent so okay i, I okay. got there that's what that's what that's why i figured yeah. and so uh you know just in case i'll try and get you again probably also just to get you all that word i know it was a little bit choppy in terms of are we meeting today are we not meeting today but um if there are public members that sit there and wait for uh a week and say huh, all right yeah I, I guess i do have something i want to say I would love to invite them. If you know people who are looking to try and uh, publicly comment, then we can do that. But uh, Friday does not give them a whole lot of time to decide that they're gonna be here on Monday. We had a chance to obviously arrange ahead of time, Monday's open, we can clear some space. Um, I, will, I will make a note for myself to make sure that those are published a little bit earlier. We can vote now for the approval of the January minutes. We had a chance to look at the January minutes. I, I know they were a while ago. Uh, I did get a chance to review them. Again, not, not really recently, but I, I think I reviewed them right before our last, right before the, uh, uh, the, the postponed meeting last week. Um, and uh, approval. Oh, oh, oh. I, had, I had sent some changes to Matt a while ago. So okay. I'm assuming so long ago I'd forgotten, but I checked my email. So hopefully as a refresher, I don't have it. I don't have it up right now. I could try and find it. I could pull it up and try and share that screen right now if anybody would like me to. Um, remember January minutes was the preparation, the, the energy we had for the January. Yeah, the energy we had for the January meeting. Uh, if you remember, this is going to be a major part of my first section here major part, it's gonna be my, uh, my pound of flesh for the first part is the Winterfest. The Winterfest was a big part of that, that January meeting. And that'd be a segue into the program reports for me if, if necessary. But we, we talked about budget, we talked about the position for the budget and COVID restrictions, and we talked about Winterfest. Uh, so if there are no corrections for the minutes, we can move into the program reports. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I'm probably supposed to um, send these to Marion for her to publish on the town website. Yeah, I'll I'll do that soon. 
that sounds that sounds um, uh, like it would now, be appropriate. I'm not sure if you wanted me to attach the uh, the program report that you sent that you presented to Paul Bockelman or or not attach that to the minutes. Oh yeah, I did. I I'm trying to remember what I put in there. Maybe not. I'll look at that. Okay. I, um, it's okay. I don't. Just, I don't remember. Just, well, the reason why I hesitate I is because I don't know for sure that that was. I don't think that I have anything there that I that would it be appropriate to send to the. It wasn't a discussion with Paul, so I don't need his his feedback. But I don't think there's anything in there that's not for the public. Uh, and if I share it with you all at the meeting, obviously it is public. Okay. Yeah. of windows open here this one never shared on two screens so uh, program so uh, three focuses for our program reports uh, one of them, and this is straight from our agenda here, one of them is Winterfest. I would like to start by apologizing to you all. I, like, I know, you know, I, I knew that there was going to be some resistance to our correct to our changes to the Winterfest schedule. I didn't know it was going to be near unanimous that last session, and I did feel bad about that. If we had already moved to the point where, where, where it was hard for us to go back and try and argue to change it and change it back, Omicron did... Uh, uh, pause us. I talked to Paul on two separate occasions about it, specifically saying, here's what I could have done. Would this have been something that I could have done something differently? We talked about that a little bit. Um, uh, if I had to do that over again, so you all so you all hear this, if I had to do that over again, it's not that I would not have have still made the move to support the staff and and say we want to we want to modify and 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 uh, uh, make it quieter, make it make it less uh, uh, you know, less public, less uh, less crowd centered. But I definitely would have involved you all earlier in that process, as opposed to telling you this is what we were deciding to do. Um, I probably should have reached out and told you that we were having that conversation, so that so that I don't have to tell you what's going on, as opposed to. Uh, uh, you know, as opposed to pulling you in and saying, this is what we're thinking about doing. So that same conversation we had could have been had with the folks that we were making the decisions with. At that point, it was, it would have been really, really hard. I think they were still saying that we don't want to, we don't want to take on the risk. We don't want to take on the risk and have it, have it fall apart. But, but at that point, uh, it was late enough that I couldn't have pushed through with that anyways. If I had to do that over again, I'd take recommission, uh, uh, input into it. When it was brought to my attention in the first place, my first thought as the director was, how can I support my staff that says, we don't want to do this. This is, and staff that's not trying to get out of anything because they, they really like, this is their, their whole mission. This is something that they put a lot of energy into, but they expressed concern and wanted to know if I would be okay with them uh, trying to pull and modify it. And I said, absolutely. How can I support that? And there is that piece of the public, which you all represent, that that should have also gone into that that uh, process. Winterfest was a little bit of a fizzle. I'd be honest; it was a little bit of a fizzle. Um, the uh, uh, I thought the I got a chance to walk through the ice sculptures and stuff. The the drive through ice sculptures on a fifty degree day or whatever. It was like forty degrees that day, and so it wasn't ideal. Obviously, there was very little snow on the ground around it. And so it just it certainly didn't feel like Winterfest along those lines. Um, the, the, the craft work was beautiful. It was, I did see some other people going down there to check it out, but it, it just didn't have a festival sort of feel to it. Um, we, could have, we could have been planning for the, the weather was probably a bigger concern for us than COVID and that it was just too warm to do winter stuff. Uh, the weekend of of uh, the Cherry Hill, the, the cardboard race would have been a dud also because of weather. Um, but 
we could like certainly that doesn't that doesn't prohibit us from finding some other way of making that work. Um, outreach and our our collaboration with the bid in the chamber, uh, I think that they are you know they certainly put a considerable amount of effort into making what they could make out of that work. But I would be a really, really poor hype man if I came to you and told you, hey, Winterfest was great. This is what it's all about. This is the community getting a chance to look down as they drive, <laughs> as they drive from town to town and say, oh, hey, there's something going on over there. And it just, it didn't feel like what I know Winterfest is. And uh, I apologize about that. <laughs> Ray, is there um, is is there a reason why they didn't have we used to have a Winterfest committee uh, that constituted from people from those your different organizations that were in, on that conversation, but there was also some other people from outside that were always. I don't involved. know. I can I can ask about that. The Winterfest yeah. committee this year was basically myself, Nikki, and right, and that's uh, not you know you, you guys have a lot to do other than that, mm -hmm. so. You know, I think it's it's it was a, a shame to waste that up. You know, you don't want people to get involved in something else that have always done Winterfest, because then next year they'll be onto their other projects. So, but I would bring that up next time you guys start talking about it and just see if you can, you know, gather. And and it was always gathered by Rec, so it was always started right. there. But then we had people from the chamber, we had people from the bid. You know, we had other people come into it. Do I have? A it yourself probably but do i have people who have served on that here who've I was operated on. with you weren't on it i was you you were okay um a use of how so how when did the committee start talking about Winterfest? i imagine it was like in october but oh gosh yeah we talked about it you know i remember a couple of times talking like at the golf course or something you know on the deck you know so yeah it was usually early enough that we would yeah. start reviewing what happened the year before, you know, what should we try, what kind of to get, right. I mean, we got a lot of sponsorships, we got a lot of money in for that, from that. So it's, um, we can blame COVID this year, but I think if, if we yeah. do want to okay. try to bring in some more money out of it, you know, I think it was a good fundraiser. Originally it started with the chamber and LSSC doing it together. And then at one point the chamber said, okay, you take it, you keep the, you know, the, the proceeds from it. Uh, but then we kept, you know, there was a good group that just kept doing it year after year. Hopefully they're good notes somewhere. I would imagine yeah, I, there could be something in Ray's office. <laughs> <laughs> in a but, box. You know, he's still ramping up, so we'll, we'll leave him, you know. You know, this being my first time through, I, like the commissions that I see are sort of, I, I'm, I'm careful not to allow anybody to, well, this is the way it's always been when it's like been two weeks, two years since I did it. I don't assume that the way that we did it this year is the way it's always been done and the way that it, it's supposed to be done or anything there. I know that, uh, you know, that's, that's a collection of forces that I love sitting in the room with uh, of sort of uh, community programming forces with the, with the three or four people that, that I'd sit with and about three meetings. Um, those those meetings, uh, you know, uh, if it wasn't for our pulling back, then there was a uh, there was a sense that it was going to be uh, number one community engaging. Number two, there would be a lot of opportunities for us to uh, uh, invite revenue to uh, to invite some contributions. We could turn it into a, a, a financial event, not the purpose, but we could turn it into places where we could where we could uh, uh, you know, create a little bit of revenue, that it, would, it was gonna be family fun. There were a lot of different uh, community members that, that had been approached and brought into it. Those pieces I think were in there, um, but I, I mean, uh, if, we have a, if we have that Winterfest committee that has more members of the public that are involved, other than, other than their being able to tell basically speak as you all spoke at, the, at our meeting in January, instead of being, uh, uh, being able to, to uh, have more, uh, more voices that say, oh, well, how about we just scale back? How about we do this? How can we, can we work with the health department? Can we work with so-and-so? What uh, have we exhausted all of our opportunities? And other, other than having somebody that, that can offer those, I, I, I don't know if, if a, if a, larger commission would have necessarily generated more possibilities for that 
for that event because I thought I thought the the possibilities were were substantial for what they had been putting together for the three events. Um, that is notable that we that that we you know it's it's a small group of of people who who are making the decisions there for for looking down the line. It would have been, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, I, I can do the crystal ball and say what would have happened if we didn't. And now, now do we have a fizzle in a different, in a different light, in a different way? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't look back too much. I mean, <laughs> it's still, it's, it's still a pandemic, and yeah. everything was super uncertain. But you know, God willing, it's going to be different next year. You know, so I would yeah. hope that we plan for kind of back back to normal or a new normal, but be ready to scale back if Epsilon shows up or something. So, um, so I am, that's the wrong one to share. Document, document, yes. We haven't, you're not sharing I your know, screen. I, if you, I, okay. I just okay. share screen. sharing that one, that one, that one, director's notes. <clears throat> See if I can boost this. Okay, so um, uh, structural, the structural uh, pieces, this is also goes into the, into the category of, of uh, program, uh, program news. Um, uh, this was, uh, this is my report to town manager and you all. This is this is uh, again that shared uh, communication that I that I met with Paul last week. Um, right now, and I can I can sum this up. I can put this like, share this with you all at, at the end here. Uh, both of my program directors, both of my existing program directors right now, Marion and Jose, are I'm in the process of working on a, on a few structural. Uh, 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 structural issues with with both of them. With Marion and the operations, we're looking at fee structures and subsidies. We're spending a lot of time looking at how how to streamline the subsidies and make it so that so that it's easier for our department to provide the the resources uh, to to make after school in particular, but to make all of our programming a little bit easier easier access for folks. We do give out a substantial amount of subsidies uh, to to people that are using it. We're going to try and quantify that and make sure that that's known by the city and by the by the town council just how much we're putting into this but because so much of it is sort of moving we're, we have this money that we're trying to find we have people we're advocating inside of our programs for people who may need some assistance to uh to apply for assistance we're working with and and the after school program we're working with the family center at the schools uh, and so fee structures and subsidies is one one piece that we're trying to we're trying to build as we go along the structure, which makes it easy for us to 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 uh, make our programs uh, uh, accessible. Uh, we're looking at a redesigned marketing strategy for rec programs. Uh, the uh, our marketing team. I don't know if you guys have noticed. I'm sure you have. Our our uh, seasonal pamphlet has been reduced to a trifold. Um, a uh, trifold that basically moves people into our website. It's a QR code that moves people onto our website so that we don't have to, I don't want to say waste because I know that it's kind of popular to look at that at that, uh, at that that brochure. I know there's some sort of interest in seeing that publication come to your mail. For a lot of people that for that publication comes to the mail. But, uh, uh, you know, people who are really interested in rec basketball uh, uh, and, and the two pages that cover rec basketball are also consuming all of this paper that we're sending out for programs that don't affect them. A lot of it's registration information that we can certainly move eyes online. We have those, we still have central spaces for uh, that registration information. We are trying to guide people into the office if we can, but we have basically a short blast for our different spring programs and the guide the guide points into registration on online. Um, 
uh, and so we're doing some more. We're also doing some other things to try and to try and uh, limit the cost uh, of uh, and the burden of putting those together, and also in, invite more traffic into places where where it's more inviting, more interactive. Maybe we're trying to do more narrative. One of the things that we we've really been pushing for that I've been really pushing for is more narrative. Uh, publication about our programs. This is our experience in the program. This is what we've done. These are the things that you know, your first coach sort of things, more, more things that have people actively think about the experience they have as opposed to just where do I send my money? Where do I do this? There's, there is something to be said about having very easy information. Say, just give me this, the, the site where I can, I, can, I can sign my kid up. But we also want to try and make this into a little bit of a checking in on the people in your neighborhood sort of thing. These are the people who who do uh, uh, our, our uh, you know, the, let's call it kids art, the kids art and the science programs. These are the kids that do this and give a chance to, to sort of, uh, you know, you know moat the experience part of this. One thing that I looked at when I first took over was beautiful brochures, but it, but it, it didn't tell me about the experience. It told me how to get in. It didn't really tell me about the experience. And so, so we're trying to cover some of that. Our physical office is basically, we're doing a little bit of remodeling here and, and putting our, our uh, program directors in the front and we're trying to create storage spaces here, but that's, that's more about our workflow than it is about the general public. With Jose, we're looking at two major issues here. Uh, we're looking at uh, uh, Cherry Hill membership and revenue. Uh, uh, Yusuf was involved in a group that we brought in of Cherry Hill uh, regulars, if you will, uh, that we wanted to try and we, as we're preparing for a rapidly uh, upcoming uh, uh, golf season, we're trying to review how we can how we can best capture the fact that we we did have a wonderful year at Cherry Hill. Um, it's one place where we saw unprecedented success. Uh, over the course of this last year, last couple of years, and we're trying to find a way to maintain that and to also uh, uh, you know, basically let this be maybe even momentum for the golf course uh, and, and, also, and also set up a structure that, that, that uh, won't be obtrusive in terms of, in terms of, uh, in terms of being able to, to, to use that momentum and, gen and generate more revenue. Uh, we want to do that unobtrusively. We want to do that in a way that that uh, you know certainly the town can can uh, support us. The town will feel supported by the revenue we create on, a, on something that could, if done well, could be a revenue uh, creator for us. We've been looking at that. We have, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I haven't told you of this, but we're uh, we're going over to talk with John on Wednesday, and we basically have the the, the we should. We're, ironing a couple kinks out here, but we're, we're going to be going over that, that uh, season plan here at that point. There are a few things I think will be, will be pretty attractive. I hope will be as attractive for people who are in, in that golf world as it is for me, who's just sort of getting my feet wet. Um, and then also, this is a, go ahead, Sarah. Sorry, I'm just afraid. <laughs> I'll, I'll forget this. You said you wanted to, you're hoping to make some aspect of the, I don't know, maybe of the membership experience or something unobtrusive. We, yeah. What do you mean? We're, try, we're trying to make changes that will be unobtrusive to the things that we think have been, have, that, that, that I would say could be described as special about being a, a member at Cherry Hill. We want to make changes that are going to be unobtrusive, yet give us a chance to make make money there, give us a chance to gather more members, give us a chance to, to keep some momentum going as it is certainly, uh, 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 Cherry Hill is not something that is necessarily stable in terms of being part of our world forever. Um, there's a lot yeah. of questions about, about what it is and what our, what our relationship with the golf course is. I love the fact that we run a golf course. I love the fact that I'm in a position basically to say I run a golf course. Five years ago, that would have been a laugh, uh, uh, but, but I, I know that there, there are some questions in town hall, there's some questions in the public, there, and it's not invented all of a sudden now. I know they've been going on since well before I was here, uh, what our relationship should be as a, as a town with Cherry Hill and with golf courses in general. Matt? Yeah, I think 
there's probably an opportunity in the next few years to with Hickory Ridge closing to capture some of that traffic. And I, I'm not sure, but I, there might be other golf courses in the area that also closed. I'm not sure. We're doing a little bit of comparison. I mean, we're in a different situation than a lot of the places we try and compare ourselves to because we are municipal and there aren't a lot of those. Um, but we are trying to well, do I'm just comparison. saying, I'm just saying people who used to play golf at yeah. Hickory Ridge, they're not all of a sudden going to stop playing golf. No, no. But I think, you know, we need one of the things that we've been looking at is different ways to engage people, because I think we've lost a lot of people that were members at Hickory that have already gone some other places. So we're That's, trying to figure out ways to add value uh, to a golfer, you know, whether it's a season golfer or just, the, you know, the, the casual once in a while kind of golfer. So we're, that's, that's the kind of things that we need to add this, this season. Otherwise, I don't think we can capture a lot of these people. Value of a membership is what we is, is basically the, 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 the focal point of my budget submission for golf that we wanted to try and spend this this year really evaluating how to add value to the membership there. Yeah, um, I don't know much about golf, uh, how that works, but um, is there is there possibilities to do like, uh, if you're a member here, you get a certain number of rounds at such and such other course and vice versa? Not other courses because we can't, we can't extend outside of our own. But, no, I mean, but, if you do a deal with no, Mill yeah. Valley or something. I, I've seen that in Canada a lot. Um, and I think really? we just, I think we need to step up to the table first. We need to bring up our game before, I see. before approaching something. You mean the imp improve the, improve the, the improve course itself is in good shape. Without, yeah. I mean, course is gorgeous. the amount of staff we have, the course is yes. in good shape. Uh, yes. The problem is we're still viewed as this little place, you know, this little thing with a shack because it was, a, it used to be run out of yep. a shack years ago. Yep. So until we bring our game up a little bit more, it's going to be hard to have those conversations. But I've actually thought about that because my, my, where my brother-in-law plays in Canada, you know, they have this score, you know, you can get points from different places you go and then you earn like a round somewhere. You know, there's all these different things you can do and, and it kind of encourages people to go to different courses and, and get involved more. Yeah, so maybe the heart, problem is it's a, per, a perception thing, what you're saying mm -hmm. is exactly. the actual experience of doing a round is is really good but when you pull right. up to the parking lot or you drive by you're like what is that right well and that's that <laughs> to have that dirt parking lot with big holes in it doesn't doesn't project um quality so i wonder if there's been any thought given to paving it just paving it striping it making it like a yes. real parking lot the uh there i can answer that and say yes there has been thought uh, it is, I believe right now, a secondary thought. We've talked about it as capital, uh, as capital requests in the past. I know that's on our, that's on my, my longer year window of capital requests. I, it wasn't something that was, was, uh, an immediate concern because there's some, some, uh, equipment issues that I know Cherry Hill needs. There's some, some other things that are sort of more important right now. They've done temporary fixes on that parking lot in the past which we're going to try and see if we can do especially after the the the, the ice and the thaw here I, I imagine that that parking lot is probably horrible right now i haven't been there in a month uh but i imagine the parking lot is probably horrible right now and you're right um yeah we we do want to make it physically inviting like you're not going to break yourself <laughs> and your and your car by coming in or coming over here that makes it a little bit more costly. Uh, what Matt just described is, I, I think, you know, uh, Matt was in the right in the right place with that because I think, uh, you know, that was the core of what my first conversation with Yusuf was about with the about the golf course was how can we? It's an experience sort of thing. How can we get? Uh, how can we add something to the to the to the experience of people that go there? Um, um, we we membership is important for us because it's it's secure money it's secure revenue for us um the reality is that it's not the we don't make as much money off of membership as we make off of others but, but because of the, our relationship with people who provide us with secure money um we want to make sure that those folks are 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 treated well we want to make sure that we're giving them something 
to to uh, make the value of that membership worthwhile. Um, in comparison, like there's, it's too hard to do. When I brought up comparisons, it's too hard to do functional comparisons with a lot of other courses because our relationship is different, our our budget is different, our the, our clientele is different. There's a lot of things that make us different from some of the places we compare to. But at the same time, uh, you know, there there are places there's there there are ways that that we have, I think, advantages for Amherst residents to come and golf at Cherry Hill. And we wanna try and hold on to those. There are ways that we need to be more responsive to, uh, to, to uh, people who do use and who do give us that secure money of memberships and, and uh, support, uh, support them as they support us. And so our being creative is trying to find ways to make it someplace where people want to be. Um, uh, golf, golf is basically, Golf is, I don't want to, I don't want to reduce it that much, but golf is golf. Uh, you go out and you play golf, you play golf, but but it comes down to if I'm going to be putting money into it, I'm going to be spending this much time in here. I want to make sure that the place I, I'm going to spend time, that I want to spend time there, that there's some reason that draws me in. And that's where we're trying to be creative about, about making it so that it's worth your while financially. And it's also worth your while uh, in terms of being an experience that, 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 that means something. But that structure is something I knew would be an issue for us, and we've been sort of stuck trying to trying to figure out where it's going to be. But I think we've we've made headway to to come up with a structure that that makes sense. And so we'll probably be posting that on Wednesday. We'll probably be posting the the rates, and we'll be talking about opening here as soon as we get the okay from from uh, grounds folks. As soon as we can, I'm hoping that the weather obviously gives us a chance to get an early season in golfers are already itching because we've had a couple of thaws now and it just feels like it's coming. Nothing like a golfer when they sense a thaw coming. Um, and so I'm going to go out and walk the course here Wednesday also just to, it'll probably be a mess, but I'm going to go out and walk the course also just to say that I did. Uh, the other thing that we've been working on in sports is feeder programs. I, I, I'm a little bit behind where I wanted to be. So I'll just say that we're working with the schools to try and develop uh, feeder programs. Both of these have been a source of a little bit of anxiety and stress for me because it's not easy to just say, hey, let's do a Cherry Hill, uh, let's do Cherry Hill membership. And everybody says, okay, that's going to be fine. We just do this and it'll be fine. Uh, we'll, we'll work it out. Same thing for the feeder programs. Sometimes like we're trying to generate interest and people are like, no, I'm not interested. <laughs> uh, uh, we're trying to work with the, with the school systems and there, there are hiccups in those relationships also. But we are trying to build programs that will feed the high school sports. There are some high school sports, especially in the girls area. There's some high school sports that are struggling right now for numbers. And, and in a town where rec spends so much of their time feeding those high schools, we have so many rec programs here. It becomes really important that we're connected with the high school and that we are putting people in place where they can move to the high school and be empowered to try things and do things. And so we're trying to capture kids early and we're trying to build and inviting feeder programs. Uh, we are starting up a lacrosse program, uh, a middle school lacrosse program, basically a, a, feeder, lac a feeder lacrosse program that goodness, I hope works because there was a lot of energy early and now it's, it's, it's feels like it's starting to, uh, starting to sort of yawn. Okay. Let's see what the season looks like but we're starting a lacrosse program. The girls program has struggled mightily for numbers here recently. The boys are struggling a little bit as, as, uh, as there's a lot of things that are pulling them in different directions as, as uh, middle schools. Uh, uh, working with Sanjay on the, on the baseball situation, which is, I think, a, an area of, of need for the high schools. Uh, we have, I think we have a, we have a role in, in rec to be able to help support uh, you know, kids going to high school prepared to see if they're good or not, prepared to put their best foot forward when they get to the high school and can compete to keep that program alive and keep uh, baseball, softball going in a direction that's, that, that, that helps. Um, we're trying to examine the health of our feeder programs and, and work with the schools to make those a little bit better. And so that's a big project for myself and Jose, largely Jose. And so uh, Ray, the last Ray. piece, he, go ahead. 
Yes, yeah, essentially. If, if I could comment on the feeder programs a little bit, obviously I have a parochial interest in one of them, right? The baseball that you and I have been talking about. Right. Um, but just publicly as part of the commission, I mean, I think I want to emphasize the importance of that piece of a recreational athletics program to the town and community that these seventh and eighth, seventh and eighth grade is the, is the donut hole in athletics. Um, and lots of kids are lost to being active during those years. Um, I think it's quite unfortunate that the school district has not seen fit to take that on as part of their responsibility to their students. Um, that's a mild way of putting what I actually feel about the situation. Uh, and I think it's unfortunate that this is winding up on your desk. Um, but the brutal truth is that Amherst Rec is the next best capable uh, option in terms of providing those opportunities to these kids. And those are kids from the boys and girls, you know, for those are boys and girls, those are rich kids and poor kids. Those are kids with single moms and no moms and two dads. And I mean, it is everyone, right? And there is no entity that is, so the only entity better equipped to do this than Amherst Rec is the school district because of their direct ability to reach children, right? Uh, from across the demographics of town and provide support such as busing and paid coaching and fee waivers. So. But in the absence of the school district, um, which is the case, the school district is absent essentially from, from this demographic, from this age group, um, it, Amherst Rec is the one to do it. Uh, and so, you know, you have my support, not just with regards to baseball. I mean, I think that this is an issue that is important to me as a, as a citizen of Amherst, right? Far beyond the particular sport that I happen to be directly involved in. The, the tough part about it also, and thank you for saying that, the tough part about that little hole that you describe as being that seventh, eighth grade year, you mentioned it with baseball, and I think that's true in a bunch of the sports also, except for volleyball. Volleyball is, volleyball is good. Um, <laughs> I, I well, like volleyball. You, no, so actually, can I say something about volleyball? Yes. So volleyball yes. is good, except that from what I've heard anecdotally, there were 35 middle schoolers who wanted to play and only 17 spots on the team. So... That's actually another, I mean, I hate to be at this direct about it, but it's another failure of the schools in terms of providing an opportunity for those girls, yeah. those girls, right, to participate yeah. in a sport that they clearly love and, and are interested in. So, yes, that's the at the seventh, eighth level, grade level. That's, that's right. That's, okay. That that's makes right. sense. There was a tremendous um, amount of interest, more than double the number of spots that yeah, were they, they managed to maintain interest and, and driving kids in a way that, like, I always say that cuts are horrible, uh, you know, making, making team cuts is horrible for programs, but it does, uh, you know, uh, if you have a, a whole, a whole district and a whole, like if you're, if you're, uh, you know, uh, what's called uh, 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 co-curricular goals are lined up to try and get kids into positions where they can participate and be involved, then that, where the people have landing spots to go to go some other place, or they have a chance to feel like they're like they they have a place, even if they don't make this 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 volleyball this select volleyball team or whatever. I think that uh, I, I think the cuts allow a program like volleyball to be as successful and as popular and in demand as it is. But it's a failure of the system if we don't have if we have kids that try and do that, and there isn't a sense that you go here or you, there's or we we build another team here, almost in a rec recreational sort of standpoint if we don't have some place for them to go maybe even again especially with girls because i think anecdotally when girls get cut from sports they stop playing they don't go play pickup uh, uh know how much that sociologically plays plays out here in amherst or or what have you but i think i think that it's it, it's it, uh, you know one of the reasons why we encourage girls teams frequently to keep larger teams that would be comfortable is because girls stop playing if you if they don't make the soccer team if they don't make the the softball team if they don't do whatever they don't go out and to the park and go and play pickup if they get cut from the basketball team um the uh the, i think that the that hole in the seventh eighth grade level is doubly hard to deal with 
when you look at the fact that that's the same time where there's a hole in you, you all with with uh with kids <laughs> that's the same time when there's a hole in sort of that direction or order for kids and kids start doing the independent thing and so that's a really really susceptible time for kids to to decide i don't want to do sports at all i don't want to do anything at all i don't want to do so i, I just want to like that's a time where you can't just program them with you know go outside and play that's a time where they need to be doing stuff um, there. Sarah, yeah. I would think that feeds right into the idea of a youth center, and yeah. it will get get to that later. But no, I mean that I, that is in part to be an option, right? For it, yes, and I yeah. that's I think your finding that segue is uh, that's probably exactly what I should have been looking at when I'm when <laughs> I should have been thinking about that when I put together this agenda. Yes. That that does feed that idea of a youth center about what we want, and I'm actually writing that note for myself right now. Also, um, um, uh, talking about segueing from that that little hole that we unfortunately have in the middle school age. Um, I can skip by. I, I'll share this with you. This was uh, on the screen right now. Is operational goals. I, these are these are things that I I sort of targeted as being my 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 own individual director's goals for this for this you know sort of uh 100 days is probably pretty much passed i'm not a president but uh it feels like this is my first year here that i really want to try and tackle these issues as being the sorts of things that that, that i can i can uh hang my hat on uh, I, I spelled out communication system rec spaces because those two have been big for us uh both of them have been part of my conversation. Well, Sanjay, certainly. Uh, the communication system is scheduling. We wanna try and make it so that we have, we're introducing the, the to, to, to meet a challenge. We're trying to introduce uh, software and order that will allow schools, DPW and ourselves and REC to make it a little bit easier for the, you know, Amherst baseball to find out what they're, what, how to get in, how to, how to get this for people who want to try and use Mill River, try to, try to, try to use uh, our facilities, trying to schedule our facilities to maintain our facilities. We're trying to make it so that our three departments who right now are pretty, like, I think we have a really good relationship right now between the three of us. Um, uh, we're cooperative. We've been helpful. It's not that any one of us are trying to, are trying to muscle anybody out, but for, but for structure sake, for scheduling sake, we're trying to find a way to make that centralized so that the public can go to a single person. It doesn't have to be everybody pointing at each other and saying, have you talked to them? Have you talked to them? Have you talked to them? It's gonna be some part of that in bureaucracy, of course, uh, but, but we all have separate budgets. We all have separate, separate uh, sort of goals and marching orders. We have separate uh, relationships with the public. We have separate, it's really, it can be really hard for people out there to use it, but it's also really hard for us to figure out where our where our lines are. And so, one of the things we're trying to work on here, one of the things that we've been we've been pursuing, is a proposal that would allow us a structural model of communication. Rec spaces. We're going to try and basically go in and, and reclaim recreation spaces. Reclaim is a is probably a little bit too much of a of a uh, of a dramatic way of looking at it like we want to do rec we want to we want rec spaces to be associated with rec in a way that invites people to come out there and do things either programmed uh or casual use uh we want it to be a we want it to be rec spaces we want to try and do a little it's got a little bit of branding involved in it but it is a it's it's a way of looking at at this as being a a, a place that isn't just and uh, that isn't just an open opportunity, but it also has people saying that, uh, you know, Kendrick Park is there, we have stuff going on that people can go and use rec spaces as recreation. Um, so do you mean, for example, that rec would offer yoga in the park on Sunday, yes. Saturday? That would, that would be the sort of thing. And uh, th it's, uh, this is, um, you know, the, it basically would be the idea that this yoga in the park and underneath the banner of our of our <laughs> of our of our rec of our rec symbol or whatever, take pictures, make sure that make sure that this is rec space that you're doing this, and it's not simply programming, but it also is programming with the rec department, so that we understand that, that, that recreation spaces are 
a it's a it's a public utility. Um, Harry Hill, we talked about the strategic, the strategic plan that we mentioned a couple of meetings ago, uh, 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 making sure that we are still on path in the strategic plan that was initiated before I got here, feeder programs I just talked about and the youth center, which we're moving into now. Um, so, all right, we're not that far behind. Um, are there any questions about program reports? I didn't do spring season program and we got, there's a few things that are up in the air still, but uh, uh, are there any questions about any of the stuff that we looked at here about uh, structural programs, our structure projects, about my operational goals for as a director here? Um, if go ahead, Sarah. Well, it's not a question, but I'm thinking back to to um, what you said about the brochure being um, maybe a waste in many cases because people are interested in just one thing or one they already know what they're interested in and i'm thinking that in the past those brochures have been left in big piles in the libraries and in town hall and now you have the trifolds or whatever but i i wonder if if marion or others have thought about maybe having just cards that you know it's youth programs another card for adult programs and I don't know, or one just on swimming and people can just take, pick up the card. You know, it's like a piece of a brochure, but. Uh-huh. The answers, I know that came up early. I wish I knew exactly where it is right now, but I know that we, we were talking about leaving stuff in the schools and leaving stuff in the, in the uh, kiosks at, at, uh, Groff and leaving stuff in the kiosk at, at a, a mill. Um, uh, uh, basically, I basically making bilingual or multilingual or or QR code to get the Spanish version or, or something like that. My assumption is yes, but I don't know that that's a safe assumption. Uh, have we done that in the past? Have we been in? Has that been something that, that we've had access in the past? Not that I know of. Okay. But I think that could be huge. <laughs> yep. I agree. I will definitely look at that. I, I gather the town has got a grant for some, maybe it's translation services at meetings. I don't know, but maybe there's an opportunity to get some translation help for um, web pages or program information. check youth center neither jose nor annabelle were available to come tonight uh it was late that i talked to annabelle uh so she was surprised and i think she may have been a little bit nervous about coming in um i don't know if you all know annabelle mott annabelle mott is mickey's uh assistant um uh, last i talked to you i can stop the share here Last I talked to, uh, uh, the last I talked to you all, I had sort of mentioned that we were doing these field visits. Um, I'm gonna skip down to the field visits first since they're not here to, to present there. Uh, the first one I believe maybe had been done before, I may have wrapped up that visit with Jose to South End Community Center. Uh, it's, a, it's my sporty, it, that was my sporty field trip. South End is based heavily around uh, a, you know, a bunch of money that was generated to build a, a beautiful basketball court that they generate a lot of revenue because they've become the center of Western Mass for like summer leagues and, and, and uh, in school, like fall leagues. They've, they've become the center of a lot of that. They get, kids, they get teams up from Connecticut. They run AAU tournaments there. Uh, the basketball courts are the center of that whole piece. They had originally put in a plans for a pool. The pool did not work out. They said that's that was too much of a headache for them to try and deal with. But they have some weight training stuff. They have some physical. It, it basically is a gym that they run as a community center and feed the needs of the South End. Because one of the one of the most impoverished areas uh, demographically in Springfield uh, to to bring kids in to do some work with schools. Um, you know, they're, they're responding to people's needs, but they use this, they use as their, as their jewel 
the, the revenue producing possibilities of a basketball court. People coming in and just playing pickup, kids coming in and playing in all, all hours and getting kids in so they can build relationships that way. And that way is sort of a drop in. They do have some scheduled programs. They're also, but it, we had a chance to sit down with the director who both of us are familiar with uh, through former uh, interactions. Um, but we had a chance to sit down with the director and talk about how how they've uh, built a relationship with the town, with the with their residents, and you know certainly you know their vision for sports programming there. Um, very different from us because they are they are not municipal. They're not they are not a program that is it's funded by the town. They have you know they 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 have certainly. Uh, uh, some it's not like they're entirely independent, but they they are not a municipal organization. They don't have the same budget restrictions that that we would have. They they were able to generate the ability to build their own space, which we don't really have um, yet. Um, the second trip, which was I believe after our last meeting, was the one with I went down to Enfield with Nikki and Annabelle. Uh, Enfield does have a municipal youth center, and I thought it was run out of their rec department. It's not run out of their rec department, which explains why their rec department was so confused when I kept on calling them to try and <laughs> try and connect with the youth center director. Um, uh, it it's not run by their rec department, but they have a separate uh, separate department base, which is their youth center. It had just moved like a month before our trip, so they were just settling into a new space which is a public space. It's like part of a public building, which I think they shared with social services, um, their own wing of the building. That physically feels like, like it's closer to what we would end up doing perhaps, and that we'd end up sharing some space someplace. Like it's basically our relationship with the schools right now and in the middle school where they have this wing where they can operate their offices out of and they can, they can bring kids in and they have their own separate sort of, sort of a, life in the same large building. It was fascinating for us. I know that Nikki and Annabelle were, were, uh, were, were pumped by the idea of, of running a drop-in center for kids to come in here. A lot of kids who are sort of uh, 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 you know, fighting a lot of different things and looking for those same things in that, in that seventh, eighth grade hole and the, and the young high school holes that they're, they're looking to come and hang out. They're looking to have something. It's not a lot of heavy programming with it. They do some, they have some gardening. They have a little garden in the back. They have a kitchen where they do some cooking classes. They have a stage now, which they said they haven't started to use yet, but they're, they're fascinated about what they could possibly do with a stage in there. They, the day that we got there, they had just gotten some new pool tables, which I didn't, I mean, kids, I don't know what kids' relationship with the pool is now, but you put pool tables in front of kids and they all believe that they're, that they're, uh, you know, sharks. Um, uh, they're, uh, you know, they have a bunch of different opportunities. We, we got into a very healthy conversation. I think I debated myself on this for a while about whether or not we would want to have a video game room in our youth center. Um, ah, everything about me says no, but that, that is definitely a way to get kids in. If you want to, like, I don't like the idea of doing a video game room in a place where you're trying to say, let come over here and be active and be social and be community. Uh, uh, I haven't said, I haven't told myself no on that. Uh, but they they do have a bunch of they do a lot of uh, sort of uh, uh, to call it a divert they have some diversion work that, that goes on there um, you know they they have a lot of it's like it's like they rely heavily on kids believing that this is important for them so they it's not like over policed it's not a whole bunch of adults saying go over here and do that and do so and so. So it, there is a little bit of space for kids. There's a small gym. It's the opposite end from South End. It's small. It's about the size of our elementary school gyms, where they say there's there's a number of kids that come in and will play there. It's, you can't do any like tournaments. You can't do any real games in there. But it's but it's uh, you know people can play a little bit of, of pickup in there. It's big enough that you can do things. So there's activity there. There's sort of an escape in there. There's a there's a bunch of books and they do some so do they have homework time there. But they said people don't use it as much as we'd like them to do. They have like study hall sort of things that they do. Uh, my outreach 
the, my outreach folks were loving it. They loved the relationship that they had with the kids. They loved it. They lo- we went while it was in session. We went during the setup and then had a chance to watch it. So watch kids come in and use the space a little bit. And the, you know, my outreach folks were saying that this is, when I think about a youth center, this is what I think it looks like. Um, bars, through practice, through whatever. But uh, there are elements of both. Uh, the hope is that my outreach ends up being a, a that you know Nikki or somebody like Nikki would end up being a would being elevated to a program director. So I could I could turn that pro, that outreach uh, into a major function. We could we could empower them to to go and extend recreation in ways that I took the job saying that's a, that's what I want to do. Um, those field trips were were helpful. Matt, go ahead. So, how do the kids get there at Enfield? Do they just walk from the school? It's it is close to the school. There are some kids that walk. Uh, there are kids. There is a bus line. It's right on a bus line. Also, um, it's it's like right on one of the major bus lines. But there are kids who walk over from school and you think the largest demographic is that like seventh eighth grade demographic or we got there they said that when we say large they're probably on a on on any given day they might have about a dozen to two dozen kids that that sort of drop in and and do stuff just for dropping stuff there isn't stuff planned they might have a dozen two dozen kids that show up um all right what was the question i was there uh uh, what was what was your question? I lost how I was going to connect it. That's how they get there. If it oh, was, how they get there was the nearest school, right? The second no, yeah. What was the second part of that? You said something after the after how do they get there? The the the, the seventh and eighth grade are they oh, yeah, the, seventh, the eighth largest grade. So, demographic? So the seventh eighth grade, the kids that showed up there were were seventh eighth ninth grade. Uh, they were basically young, like middle school, high school age kids. So, yeah, it's sort of that gap between they don't have like after school and elementary school and they can't like drive or have a job. Right. So what do they do? What do you do if you're not involved in anything? They've had kids with with major sort of like legal issues that, that use the space. The woman we talked to has been running it for about, I think about 15 years, 15 to 20 years. And it seems like she has a lot of energy and triplets, but she has a lot of energy. <laughs> <She> is, <laughs> I think, I think her triplets are 20 years old now. <laughs> um, Dara. Yeah. Uh, a question and, and, and a thought. Um, so were, were boys and girls coming? Was it mostly anything? It was mostly, it was mostly boys when and we saw them speaking? showing up, but uh-huh. we asked that question. They do have a bunch of girls that come in also. And did they interact or did they like girls need some space away from the boys or not? Or <laughs> Great question. I don't, I don't know. We didn't really, we didn't stay long with, with all the kids when they showed up. Like we, we wanted to give them their space. We, we, Met them as they were pulling the tarp off the, the pool tables and and talked to them a little bit as they were sitting down just to sort of chat before they started doing yeah. stuff. Um, I don't know how how thoroughly they they uh, interact if it's just natural if it's like the nature channel you sit there and watch them and like this is different. Uh, <laughs> what what is he going to do next? <laughs> um, and then my my thought is or just to mention in case it's not on your radar that the Amherst sixth graders will be moving to the middle school and just so that they're somebody's thinking about whether this is for them also or just how that works. That's segue, all. Sarah, you are my segue <laughs> master. <laughs> um, um, I skipped by the feasibility study. And I'll mention that at the very end, but the thing after the field visits on the agenda was the impact of other town projects. So there are other major town projects that are also, there, there are other major things that affect our youth center directly. One of them is the sixth graders moving to the middle school um, and, the, and the new sort of social experiment that that brings on in two years, not next year, but the year after that. When the sixth graders come to the middle school, it's going to, the ecosystem changes a little bit. Uh, and, 
and that would be the perfect time to start thinking about how we can support them in that process. I've pitched it already to Paul. I've already, I've already we've already talked about this with uh, with several members of of like the the proposal team. This this makes it a this makes the youth center timely because it it potentially could help shepherd in. They could they could help you know our planning meets up specifically with their planning. It could be the first major goal of the youth center that, that starts up. Well, I hope you also are talking to the school district because so we haven't got it's not clear this the middle school it's not that sixth grade will middle school well it's not certain to what degree there will be interaction what the ecosystem will even whether become. whether, whether sixth grade concern that sixth graders want to be totally by themselves and not interact at least for a couple of years there i know yeah. the proposal is that maybe we keep them so so we don't disturb things too much we have like a sixth grade and a seventh eighth grade and let them slowly be integrated in i i say i say yes that that would be different than just throwing them all together. It still is a disruption to the way that it may be, it may still lead to having sixth graders say, look, I'm at a school and I really don't even know anybody. It's just me sitting here in class. I need something to go. Like, I think I think that that creates needs wherever, well, however it happens, Matt. I mean, well, the only thing that they would do is if they actually kept the seventh grade in the same, the sixth grade in the same cohorts from the elementary schools was already at the middle school in the school day, the seventh and eighth grade don't really interact with each other. They're on opposite sides of the building. Really? I didn't, I didn't know yeah. that physically. And um, the, 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 there's two sides of the building. So there's and seventh, eighth you stay, you stay on the same side for both years. Wow. But don't, don't they, they may mingle at lunch, I believe. And there's well, I suppose they mingle, yes. Yeah, and there's I've, some some classes where seventh and eighth are together like where wherever you are in french or math you might be that says maybe not <laughs> no no I, I i don't know i this is me just responding right away i don't know any of the phyllis the ed psych sort of background to it i don't know our our town politics or anything like that it seems weird yeah. to me that you would have a school where you sort of separate them out and don't have active integration but um uh, well, I mean, they're on the bus together, and they are in lunch together. But we will, well, we will look and our, see if. Not our issue really. I'm just saying that I hope the sixth graders are part of the conversation. Sixth, gra sixth graders yeah. will be a big part yeah. of the conversation. To answer that question, yes, the sixth graders will be a big part of that conversation, and their needs as they make a big structural switch. Um, other town projects, the, uh, the town track. Uh, the track turf conversation is something that that certainly, if if for no other reason, uh, trying to trying to make sure that there's space for a youth center while we're talking about that in the public landscape, in the in the uh, in the in the budgetary landscape, uh, uh, to be arguing those two compatible uh, uh, but not connected but not overlapping missions. Uh, that's that 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 track that track plan also is speaking to some of these. Um, there there are other uh, you know, certainly there there's there's other things outside of us that we have to be aware of that we have to be oriented around. We there's there's things that we are looking at as possibilities uh, that that are that are that are you know, coinciding with other possibilities. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be advocating strong for this. We, I know there's a lot of people, that, the grant that we have to research this is, is uh, substantial enough that I feel like we, we need to be, you know, sort of shaking the bushes with, with some, uh, with a lot of different sorts of people to see what the, what the interests are, but it does overlap at the same time as we're trying to, you know, reach out to, oh, the, the, the BIPOC initiatives, uh, uh, in town here during this cycle are also something that, that feed directly into our youth center. Um, this this supports the the town's uh, uh, you know, the town's commitment to to uh, you know, uh, 
you know, creating equity and and also uh, addressing missing needs for BIPOC in the town as as they're scheduling the town. It speaks to our obviously programming need in the rec department, but the town has made that its mission during this during this cycle. Sarah, go ahead. It just occurred to me, I have no idea whether these, the model, the youth center model, is there any charge? I mean, you mentioned the basketball, like if you want to use the basketball court, maybe you have to pay, but just this drop-in center that you, I mean, they just, any kid can come for any length of time? Do they have to enroll in it? Do they have to? Oh, we, we would be looking, we would be looking at revenue. We talked to Enfield a little bit. We look at ways to do revenue creation that isn't, hey, you need to, uh, we need a membership to come into the club. It's, it, we don't want to make it, my ideal would be to be that it's not a, a YFCA membership. It's you have to, in order to get in here, you have, uh, you got to give us $150 a year. And if you want to get to the upstairs, then you have to give us $200. Uh, I would like it not to be something that we continually are, are charging people for, for admission, but we do want to offer some programming that would allow people to, to, to use the space, that's going to be a major issue when we look at the, the feasibility study. Is this feasible to, to build and operate this and have the cost in a, in a way that makes it effective for the community that we're trying to serve? Um, that feasibility study and research plan, oh, good timing. The feasibility study and research, uh, uh, we just last week started uh, uh, in, in sort of uh, pushing forward in our and, and setting up our feasibility study. We're working with uh, YSET out of Springfield that is, that's doing some research, that's YSET. It's working with YSET. Uh, 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 also working with us in, in town for another, for a couple of other, uh, in a couple other places. But uh, they are sort of surveying what we have here and seeing if the money that we have is conducive to, to, to building a youth center about what we would need, about what the needs of the community are, about what the, the operating costs would be, um, you know, really how much time and energy it'll take. Do we have the, the bandwidth to, to make work what we, what I can toss lofty goals at them all we want to, but we've started a conversation about just how to, how to, how to test that and then how to invest in that. Um, we, we did a walkthrough of our spaces. Um, spoke to uh, one of the directors uh, and the person we're going to be working with closely, who asked me, "You know, I, I'd love to come by, sit down, and meet you. We can talk about youth center, youth empowerment. What does what does that mean? And also, if you could give me a tour of your facilities." And I said. Well, come on over here. I will disappoint the heck out of you when I tell you what that our facilities are basically the school. I, I will make sure that they don't have gym class, but I'll walk you through all of the places that we use. Um, you know, I'll walk you through the gyms. We, we had a chance to go and watch the after school program. And she was fascinated with that as being a, a possibility for us and saying, you guys do an after school program. Have you thought about combining them? Yes. In our old model, our prime time after school was was in this housed by the same program that our outreach was housed by. They're two wings of the same, of the same program, and so yeah, we would we'd be looking at doing our our extracurricular work there. Um, in terms of rev in terms of creating revenue, in terms of in terms of uh, allowing this to operate, that's that's where that's where you know we get we have to we have to flesh that out in some research. Um, You know the the biggest the biggest source is going to be kids. The biggest source is going to be doing some survey work, research with kids and finding out what they're, uh, you know, what they'll be looking for. If we end up, oh, that's another one of the town projects that I forgot is like the whole sixth grade thing is also the whole uh, elementary school, uh, the 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 upcoming elementary school shuffle. Um, this is public, right? I'm not I'm not, <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm not talking out of turn, am I? I goodness, I. I never remember when I'm talking out of turn. I don't want to be on the newspaper. Shuffle, okay. The, the, uh, the building. There's going to be okay, good. some kind of building. Sarah, can you, tell me, can you tell me about elementary school so I don't feel like I'm telling anything that, that 
somebody told me like Shh, don't tell anybody <laughs> okay yeah i don't have any inside okay. information there so what's under consideration is um how to combine fort river and wildwood elementary schools um and although there'd be redistricting involved because there will not the total Redistri that said, yeah the, <laughs> the redistricting MSDA part is less of the issue for me as it is that if they if they combine those two elementary schools at a and, site to be determined at a site that's yet to be determined maybe on the site of one of the two elementary right. schools where they knock it down build it back up that's, uh, right. who that's knows also, that's 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 the next big conversation right. in the town that's that's one of the big conversations that's going on right now in town right what's not clear to me is I mean, I think it's the school committee that makes the decision about the site and to what extent they uh, need to or should <laughs> consider potential uses for the for the vacated pro property. The vacated property, when I say this is an impact of other town projects, I call that a town project. Well, we might be involved in that other property for all we know. Um, and so I, I I don't know what I would think if I was a kid. Uh, would you want to go to a uh, hollowed out former elementary school for a youth center? Is that is that inviting? Can we get rid of the school feel of it? Can we get rid of it? Is, is that like, I don't want to go to the, to, it's, it's basically Wildwood. I wouldn't want to go there and and play around if if it's just like going to school. I don't want to leave school and go to school. Is that a, is that a, uh, 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 would we be, would we be, Better off trying to find part of the the you know uh, part of the landscape over at Hickory Ridge. Uh, we would be better off trying to find uh, space at the old DPW uh, project. Uh, we would be better off trying to find another space there. We'd have to try and find a bus route. We have to try and find. There's a bunch of different things that 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 will make it necessary for us to plan and think. But but something like that. In a feasibility study and research, can we turn this space into something that would be able to operate? That would be able to uh, have it. We can't just generate it out of nowhere. And five hundred thousand dollars, the grant that we got to start, it doesn't mean that that's the end of it. But five hundred thousand dollars, you're not building a new building. You're not building a South End Community Center with five hundred thousand dollars. You you won't build a parking lot with five hundred thousand um, dollars. So. Early stages still. We don't need to have that done. That's not going to. That's not going to be a, a, uh, a measure, a, a measure of this year for us about whether or not the center is finalized or what have you. But we do want to make headway into what, what it looks like, where we're heading with that. I'll stop talking for a second. And let you all <laughs> think, think about think about butterflies or something. Um, so. Uh, that is, that's, that's basically my agenda. Any questions on the youth center, comments, observations? Uh, it's from the feedback, oh, we hate youth, get rid of them. <clears throat> um, okay, if there are any questions about any of those, feel free to reach out to me. They're in, in your spaces and the things that brought you to the commission, the thing, the parts of your lives that brought you to the commission. There could be a number of different ways that that a youth center would would speak to uh, your histories. Um, if you have anything, even if it's not about like giving me a, an agenda item, if there's anything that you, any observations about it that you see, feel free to email me or give me a call or what have you. Um, because right now we're really just collecting as many of those those uh, visions as possible. You, it's impossible for you to bump heads with our with our purpose here because we don't even have our purpose on the ground. Mm -hmm. So then I will move into the last scheduled part of the agenda. Are there are any any new commission business. Does anybody have any new commission business? Tanja? This is a, maybe a question rather than new business. I believe we still have at least one open seat on the commission. Is that right? You, I was just thinking you, about that also. Do you have any update on that? I think we had three people put in. I think that's enough for us to get 
our, I think we have three applications. I think that's enough for us to, to uh, look at, look at uh, uh, interviews. Um, I would like I'll, to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I'll be rotating off at the end of June. I don't know if anyone else. At the end of June? Yeah. I will be very sad. So we, we will have that, we'll have two seats then by June to, to deal with. So that, that may be even be part of how we do go through those interviews if we know there's another seat opening up. I mentioned before people started to come on that I'll reach out to Victor again. I know he's, he's, uh, he's incredibly busy, but I will, uh, I, I touched base with him a little bit around the Asian dementia uh, project that the, that the, uh, that, that the, uh, senior center is is guiding and pushing forward for the town and planning is doing uh, uh, and it fit his his uh, his career interest to be a part of that and so I, I do need to touch base with him a little bit about that as as we move forward and I'll talk to him again about whether or not this still makes sense for him but I know his his uh his, his it, it's not he's not blowing us off I know he is generally interested in doing recommendation stuff yeah, and I don't know if this is my last year or if I have one more. I can't remember. So. I knew it. It's me. You guys can say it. It's me. <laughs> Everybody's jumping off the ship. <laughs> no, this is my second time around. So, I, I, yeah. no, I'm joking. <laughs> so um, at some point, I'll be coming off, but I don't know when yet. I'm, I'm trying to look it up right now. <laughs> so. I will try to. Uh, oh, you're saying because it's the, it's the cycle. Right. Okay, yeah, got it. Yeah. There, yeah, there are three-year terms, and people can serve two ordinarily. Um, Gotta find a way to get Victor, as much out Victor of you guys as I, I can. Victor and I both expire, so to speak, at the end of June. Come up with a better term. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I will. Uh, I'll try and find a way to use both of you all. Uh, between now and the time you leave. Can you say a word, I and mean, it's not new business, but um, about the spring program, how that's shaping up. And it, I, I'm interested, and I know Carolyn always is in the aquatics because sometimes the pool's available or it's not available or you know whatever. So just, can you say something about how that looks? Yes, uh, I haven't had my update with aquatics. I wish I would have had that right now for that question. Um, I was swung by to try and see if Kitty was in for open swim yesterday, just to drop in and see. And open swim was up for Sunday. I know open swim happens on Sundays. Uh, uh, they are up, they are, uh, the lessons are coming up in season. Um, uh, I mentioned, I think last time about us cutting out the winter lessons and doing an abbreviated postponement that's coming up i believe in a couple weeks when when the spring seasons start so we've got lessons there we are still i mean it's still occupied by the tritons uh we still do uh, uh bump heads with the tritons from time to time in terms of scheduling purposes uh it, there weren't a lot of people using the open swim when i came in yesterday uh, and so I, I don't know carolyn maybe you can share with me whether or not that's that's a typical thing that, they're, that the numbers are are low for open swim. I really um, don't know, so I can't share it with you, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, I, I, I wanna try and be more more involved, so I drop in and see the, the, the I was in for lessons a little bit in the fall, but I'd like to be able to get in and, and see that a little bit. Uh, we are opening the pools, of course, we, uh, Nikki's been been getting herself ready. Nikki and Katie, the aquatics director, have been getting themselves ready for camp and for summer pool work. We've been hiring our staff for the summer pools. Uh, the, the summer pool season, I understand, is is a huge part uh, of the of the rec summers. Um, I know that spring is still occupied by lessons and open swim. Ray, do you have dates? Is one second. Okay. 
it up, right? I, I believe it's on our site. Um, okay. That's okay. We, I, I can look it up if it's on the site. That's fine. I believe I do believe it's on the site, but uh, I was hoping it was going to be in our trifold, but it's not. I hope I was hoping that would be one of those things. What we actually that reminds me. I should have said earlier about the trifolds. The trifolds are actually uh, we keep dates out of there on purpose because they end up being wrong on the brochures. That was one of the big complaints about the brochures is that people call in and complain and say, well, you said it was gonna be, the registration was gonna open at this time and it didn't open at this time. It's like, well, we printed it. We, we gathered the information two months ago. And mm -hmm. so things change. And so that's why they have the active QR code to try and log in and find that out. Um, no, off the top of my head. If it's not on the site, I'll check that here when I get off. If it's not on the site, then I'll, I'll reach out to you and let you know. Thanks. I guess that leaves us with, uh, with next, setting the next meeting date. It's showing up on my calendar for the 4th. 4th sounds good. April 4th. Monday, April 4th, does that work for people? Yeah. Won't be playing basketball, so whatever. <laughs> oh, sounds good. We will plan on April 4th. Uh, if, any, if anything comes up, like I said, any, any information or any questions, any, any commission business that you want to introduce, please feel free to reach out. It'll be, I probably will be reaching out to, well, Sanjay, I'll be having a conversation with you very, very soon, and you so very, very soon um, about, about <laughs> lingering stuff that from this past couple of weeks. Um, if there's anything that comes up for anybody, feel free to reach out, and I'll get it on the bulletin. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. You got it.